Welcome back to Shiftcast. This is episode 17. Michael has recovered. Yins is here. The gang is back together. Gentlemen, how are we feeling today? Um, I just want to clear something up real quick. I did not miss the last episode because Gen G <laughs> went out 5th to 8th. I had COVID-19, which is a serious disease that ravaged the world. And I don't think making jokes about it is funny. Okay. <laughs> I was sick. It's a little funny. It's a little funny. No, I was. So I was telling Hootie before we, before Jens got on, before we started, that I started feeling quite sick on Sunday, or yeah, Sunday morning. And I was like, I can't be sick. Like if I have to call out for this specific one, it's gonna be a whole <laughs> thing, and I'm not gonna be able to defend myself. He knew. But, um, he knew. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm back. Uh, I'm here to defend my boys. We had an off week, but. Um, you know, in, we trust in we trust in in, in the fellas. So do we uh, do? Oh yeah, we do. Oh yeah. Okay. We do. okay. I've seen FK come back from worse. All right, zero past okay. two, both his teammates. He, you know, zero past. They had to get. He was one. He was playing with players who needed to get paid extra on top of the money they were playing, getting paid to play the game to mm. play the game. Okay, this is nothing to him. A little top eight is nothing to him. All so right, we'll be good. They bounce back. Well, um, I mean, to be fair, Michael did say Genji would win two of the regionals. G two would get one. So here they go. Also, they got the I just want to and... point out these these are new glasses. Rihanna okay. has these glasses. Ooh. So when you say mean things about me, think about who you're saying them to. <laughs> okay. I mean, all right. Yeah. Just I mean, no, no, never mind. You're saying mean things to her done. too. Hey, I'm pretty sure. Uh, Harry Potter wore some <laughs> glasses like these, so just think about it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I wore some glasses like these. So if you mean to me, you know you know what you mean to, to me. All right. All right. Well, I'll tell Riri that you guys were making fun of her at the glasses okay, meeting. Yeah, later. next time you talk to her. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we got some fun regional recaps to start the show today. We'll go ahead and kick, out, kick it off with Europe, which... I'm having a ton of fun with. My boys are popping. They got wow, a top man. four and now a top two. I mean, look at them go. Yeah. What, we need to get I that. Mean, we need to get that Joyo apology form that I talked about made because I've had enough. <laughs> I, I just saw the whole RLCS community switch up on this guy. Last switch up. Not two months ago it was he got carried by Rise and Vatira. Oh, my, my, my. he's just a freestyle mechanics <laughs> merchant. Now, I don't want to dis discredit Oski and Archie. I think Archie's having the best split he's had in years. Yeah. I yeah, think Oski is still premier, premier. But mm -hmm. this kid, uh, you know, I, I'm very much a big believer in that players need to be put in a position to succeed. And every time the Joyo's put in a pos position to succeed, yeah. he succeeds. So that kind of means he's a superstar, right? Um, and now you have a, a player who in RLCS X and Archie we were saying was, you know, the future of Europe. And obviously he has some health issues, so it never came in there. But he's been able to look as good as anybody. I think Oski has finally really fit in on the team. I think he has a really defined role as a first man. And I'm loving it. And and yeah, listen, They're it's, it might be coming home. Like it, it might be. It might be coming listen, home. It, we might have to have okay, start listen. having conversations. How good does it feel already? It must it feel feels, amazing. I mean, we've been, call, a, we've been calling uh, Radozin Mr. <laughs> job Security, mm -hmm. but uh, it's you now, uh, good sir. Yeah, no, Working feels, on the oxygen, huh? It feels great. I mean, I, I talked about this with some of the oxygen people because they were commenting on my watch parties. Um, and I, I don't know if y'all have seen it, but I get like ridiculously excited. We're screaming and yelling. And, and I told him, I said, I didn't realize that about myself. You know, I have never had like a sports team that I'm attached to for some reason. I've never been. I, I'm always an RLCS fan, but I'm just cheering for like storylines like SRG. Yeah, when they me first, too. Right. And so I never really had something that I'm like, I care about. And I know people are like, well, you're just paid to care. But and that, that is true. I'm not I'm not going to deny that. But you do develop a relationship mm -hmm. with the people that you work with and you start to care and you want to see those guys succeed. I, I mean, I want to see these guys do well. And so I get really excited when they play um, like this. And I mean, yeah, it has been it has been so much fun. But it poses the question, is it too little too late? We had a little bit of a slow start in the first half of the season. And now, I mean, of course, they're storming back into the race. But those French teams have built such a huge lead. And, and here's a big problem for Oxygen specifically. Um, BDS and Vitality were the lowest in points after Major 1. You know, they weren't, they, realistically, they weren't too far ahead of us. 
And then here they go. Those yeah, two teams yeah. win the next two regionals. And we have Carmi Corp, who is the highest in points. They're the ones that fall out. Like everything that we needed yeah. to happen, it went the other way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but you can't complain. Yeah, you no, just of course not. Of course not. Game and Oxygen are proving that they can do that. They, they've been warming up into it in the second split, of course, with Joya. Uh, they've been boot camping, they've been doing everything they can to make it work, and it's working now. I think you can only be happy about it. And what it's going to mean for Worlds, I'm not quite sure. Um, but at least you're looking very good to attend London. Very, very good. It's not locked yet, but it, it's like you just have to perform yeah, as yeah. good yeah. or slightly worse, yeah. and you're, you're I there. Think, so, I think yeah, it's, it's just. You just have to be happy with what you can do as your oxygen, if you're oxygen. Yeah. I, I was looking at it um, the other day because I was actually really curious, like what would have to happen? Because based on the points right now, there's like it, we, there would have to be. I'm pretty sure that as long as all four of the teams currently in the major qualify for the main event, Carmen Corp is eliminated. I believe they're 19 points behind yeah. fourth out. So the four points you get from qualifying automatically would eliminate them so from what i can tell it looks like oxygen is going to have to get at least another top two to keep themselves in the race and Carmen corp can't win they need to bridge the gap a little bit more yeah. um and then we're looking at a top four or a top two at the major yeah. um and obviously that that sounds like a mountain to climb but to me Oxygen look like a major a major winning level team. And as we learned from the first LAN, you don't need to prove you don't need to be the best team going in. You just need to look like you can do it and you can do yeah. it. Right? We saw Gentle Mates, they didn't win a single regional event um going in, but they looked like at times they could compete and just mm -hmm. having that level allowed them to go workshop and, and get it. So I would love to watch a team go win a major and actually qualify for worlds by winning that major yeah, would be yeah. very, very cool. Um, it would be quite a storyline. I, I don't think they're quite there yet, but they, they're growing. They're growing right yeah. now. They're showing what they can do week after week. And if they can keep growing like this, then they can become they're a major winning team. I, I'd see them as outside contenders right now. Yeah. But if, yeah. If, if Joyo wins the second major to get him into worlds they might have to rename the copper box after him i'm not gonna yeah, lie yeah. if you yeah, win two if you win there if you win two um, that's the first event that he went to watch was in london and then when five. he became a player he won it and yeah. now he could be returning to it after a, a long stint of of struggling not being at majors not finding success so there's a lot on the line and i you know i think it's not the exact same scenario, but you, we, we all remember when Gale Force, Dignitas Dynasty was winning, winning, winning. Everybody started cheering for some sort of upset, some mm -hmm. something to trounce that domination. And like I said, it's not the exact same, but it is kind of similar where you have these four just incredibly dominant French teams or Francophone teams. And I think a lot of people are excited to see a new contender emerge. I mean, I was looking at these Twitch chat votes and... It was 50-50 with Gentle Mates. I couldn't believe it. I, I mean, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, that's the the um, reigning major champions. They were runner-up in the in this first regional. Massive. So fan I was base surprised too. to see so much support um, through the competitive lens. But I, but I understand it. You know, people are cheering for something new, something different, and and for yeah, Joyo. They're cheering for Joyo. Absolutely, no doubt. Um, it's exciting to see, and I mean, to your point about being happy about it. Of course, you know, I, I didn't mean that to come across as a complaint. Um, would a lucky break have been awesome? Of course. You know, if that's BDS that misses the event instead of Carmi Corp, we're in a phenomenal position. Mm -hmm. But we can't, like you said, we can't complain when it's our own results that have brought us here. Mm -hmm. um, with that said, we do fall to BDS in the grand finals, who was on an absolute tear throughout yeah. this event. Uh, well, actually, that's not true. Through the playoff bracket. Yeah. They Through some the changed. Stage, a little bit some up and changed. down. But then the playoff bracket, we saw world championship monkey moon i mean exactly that that and and not just him too exotic drolly were yeah. playing out of their minds Man, they were just such a the the and i didn't watch super closely in the first series but i watched the auction series very closely and i the thing is i don't even think oxygen was playing bad like they weren't it wasn't yeah they weren't bds wasn't punishing mistakes they were just better 
They held down the back line flawlessly. It didn't matter if Oxygen boost starved them and they're on 15 boosts between the three of them. They just had it figured out. They had a layer. If someone was outplayed, there's another layer there. They played so, so well on defense. And then on the offensive side, they're so clinical. They just have such a good understanding of where one another is, where the gaps are in the defense, you know, how to how to um, constrict and strangle the defense of their opponents. They're, I mean, it was just, it was a, a, a an incredible performance for BDS and, and such a Absolutely. deserved victory. You know, first thing most players do after a win or a loss in in especially in a playoff playoff record like that is head to twitter and and sure. tweet like ggs to the other team yeah but usually there's quite a few players who are like oh man sorry for right how i played that series or we really should have stepped it up and especially this playoff records in eu it was a lot of all right fair enough mm -hmm. yeah they beat us. They, yeah. they were yeah. just there were so many matchups where it's just the stronger team playing well, not really having to rely on the other team, you know, falling off a little bit. Right. Just a, a good team versus a better team. Yep. It's really yeah. nice to see. Yeah. Um well first of all, it's kind of insane. I feel like no one thinks about this, but BDS, this is their first RLCS event win since they won the world championship. Almost two yeah. full seasons ago now. That's crazy. Um, you know, Not they've obviously been so many grand finals. Yeah. They've made but losing you know, every single one. They yeah. they made what? Four did they make Five? The, No, they made the last regional grand final. They made the then the two land grand finals in the last season, then they made the second grand final. And they've been a bunch of top yeah. fours, top threes. Right. Crazy. Um, but yeah. So congratulations. I know Monkey Moon had had talked about, especially when he got injured, he crashed his car or something that he didn't want yeah. to take a break because he felt like his time was already up. So, you know, for a player that many people believe is the best to ever do it, it's very nice to see him get a win, uh, you know, a little bit later in his career where maybe he's not at the forefront of the meta the way he has one. He was at once. One thing I want to say about BDS it feels like the entire time they've been in org, they've been in, you know, the monkey moon era. Yeah. They've always tried to play a certain way and that it plays. Then the way that they try to play is extremely hard to achieve, but when it works is mm. almost completely mm. unstoppable against. Yeah. And it feels like we've seen this happen as, I mean, it worked really well in RLCSX because they had by far the best player in the game and it wasn't even really yeah. close. And so he was able to control the tempo of the game because he was playing almost at a different level, similar to like a Zen now. But as we've gone, gotten older and, and time's gone by, um, it feels like we see this BDS show up every once in a while, but almost mm -hmm. every time they show up, it's as dominant as that RLCS X BDS was. Right. They were that dominant at the fall major. They were that dominant at the back half of spring. They were back uh, 20... 21, 22, they were that dominant at the world championship. And then they were as dominant as you could be against that vitality team. So I've come to the conclusion that there's no use in ever predicting BDS because you never know when that version is going to show up. But if they do show up, they're going to win everything. So you'll never catch me picking BDS to win an event. But I always in the back of my head wonder if this BDS is the one that shows up. It's over. The minute I see them start choking teams in in that midfield, I'm like, yeah, it, it, we might need to just give them the trophy and get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> well, a fun question to ask because you, you you brought up how Monkey Moon, you know, kind of feels like he's maybe in the latter half of his career. Do we feel like this is kind of a, a transition period where that superstar for BDS is maybe drawly moving forward? Or do we feel like Monkey Moon is still kind of that guy for now? Well, I feel like that if Monkey Moon kind of doesn't fill that role as a superstar on this team anymore, it will just transition into more of a a team play team where you don't really have one player that is as outstanding as Monkey Moon was on, on previous rosters. It's just, I don't feel like you can't really be on a team with Monkey Moon and have one up over him. Sure. You have to play at his level with him instead of trying to get the spotlight from him. I, I, I don't think, I, I think they have a pretty good team chemistry i don't think yeah. anyone is trying to steal the spotlight from anyone but sure. you know what i mean i feel like drali wouldn't be the next name to stand up it would just be monkey moon kind of going more towards not stepping taking a step back and getting on one line with his teammates i feel like that's more what we would see like more team base. there's some other teams um like 
I, I guess Oxygen before Joyo as well, where it was more everyone involved and not just yeah. one player standing out, you know? I feel like that's the future of BDS, sure. not Drali taking over, maybe on a different team, but I don't see it, see it with this roster. Yeah. Uh, what, what I'm interested in seeing is, is are we going to get sort of a G2 effect with BDS going forward? Because it is the truth that at one point, maybe next year, maybe three years from now, maybe a, 10 years from now, uh, Monkey Moon is going to fall off to the point where they have to move past them. Um, but as we've seen from this sort of new era of G2, like kind of moving between the, the Cronovi Naps Rizzo era to the Naps Chicago Rizzo era, like all the different eras of G2, it feels like the new players that come in adapt to the the org play style almost sure. right yeah. and yeah. so you know monkey moon's gonna be playing on bds for at least another year most likely like he is their guy right he's been their guy they have invested into rlcs on the back of his individual performance um is he going to make a conscious effort to keep that play style in the in the bloodline in the bds bloodline like when he leaves is is drawly going to be in charge of making sure that they play that way right i don't think that's personally going to be the, the case because i think he demands a lot in a very specific way and i don't know if many people can um i don't know if many people can replicate that but in, in i think if, if they're really going to fall off if their results are going to go against them then they're going to have to change their play style. They're not going to stick with something that's not working. Mm -hmm. They're too smart for that. It hasn't, though. Like, outside of a, a small stretch where it was more individual performances that were wrong, I mean, we're now look, we're in year four of the BDS system being one of the three to five best systems in the league, in the yeah, world. But have, they really, have they really fallen off to the point where, like, they have, to, they have to do something different now? No, no, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying yeah. when so Monkey Moon starts happens. to decline... Are they yeah, going to keep playing the same way? No, no, no way. You don't think so? No so way. then I don't think it'll be like a, a handing off. I think that the team will be different. I think it won't be the same yeah. as when Chicago and Jane Apps left and they still play the way that yeah. they play. Well, an even better example than Oxygen last season is Gentlemates, right? They're a team where they don't really have one star player. Everyone can step up. Everyone can do their thing. I feel like that's the future of BDS with mm -hmm. or without Monkey Moon. Yeah, well, among, well, that's interesting you say that too because I feel like Gentlemates is more of a con a continuation of last year's Carmen Corp team because it feels like Eversax and Itachi have a very similar to Monkey Moon have a very specific way of the way they want to play the game, and so right. they've now recruited players they feel are maybe more suited to that or maybe were are more interested in buying into that than maybe Vatira and or Exotic were by the end of last year when they started to really hit a sure. wall. Um, so I wonder if that'll be the same. Like, is is Cassio going to be the, the the coach for a long time and bring people in and and, and teach them how we play? Right. Um, I think that would be like personally pretty healthy for storylines and fun for like RLCS and RL esports in general because that's the kind of stuff that you see in traditional sports mm -hmm. where like teams have systems and you know coaches and expectations mm -hmm. um, that that you know you recruit a new player and that player fits into your system and and. You know, they bring their skills to your style. Mm -hmm. um, whereas now it feels like, you know, instead of a, a an organization or a coach kind of pulling the leash, it feels like more of the player pull for right now. You know, you mm -hmm. get these three assets, and then that that determines. So I think that yeah, would be interesting. Think. Not I'm not saying one is better or worse, but I think it would be interesting um, as storylines for Rocket League esports. Yeah, I just think it really depends on if it keeps working. Yeah, if they can, yeah, totally. yeah. If, if it keeps working, then they'll keep working with it. Mm -hmm. uh, but as soon as they are not, you know, the team BDS, they don't have the, the the status anymore of a winning team. Then they're gonna have to do something about it. And totally. I feel like they're smart enough, smart enough to make those changes and not stick with what's not working. Because mm -hmm. we've seen teams do that before as well. NRG, for example, great example. We also had uh, Vitality, another pretty good performance here. They they come off of the uh, W in uh the first event taking down general mates in the finals now this time they didn't make it to the finals they ran into the head smasher bds who was just, like i said just on an absolute tear but um in their quarterfinal performance against resolve that may have been the worst beating i've ever seen in rlcs that was tough. And, and maybe there maybe there were worse in the past that i just don't remember but that was brutal well yeah 
Yeah, and I mean, we'll, we'll talk about, you know, belt to ass, as as, uh, <laughs> as some say. Uh, nobody put belt to ass more than Mr. Zen. Yeah. Uh, who put up maybe in a in a in a playoff setting in a best of seven uh, at the level that they're playing at, you know, domestically in Europe, the greatest pound for pound performance ever. I mean, we're talking about a guy who averaged 711 points a game and had a 2.16 rating across the entire series, contributed to the highest ever open era across the entire um, event rating at 1.51. Okay. So 1.5. And let's let's remind people that one point no is the average. Yeah. And 1.5 <laughs> is is extremely So he was as valuable that. on the field as if you put oh half God. of another player. Three and a half players on one team versus three is like what it in that series against Resolve, it was like they were playing four on three. That's how yeah. the impact that he was I mean, having. it showed. If you're yeah. just so, casually Brazilling them in the last game to win the series, I mean... And the scoreline doesn't even tell the whole story. Like, if you go back and watch, for anybody that didn't catch it, my gosh. It man, was a whooping. They, they sincerely look like it's a freestyle Jazer yeah. video. I'm not kidding. They're so, jumping up, catching the pass with a flip reset. It's just... It was unreal. They look so incredibly confident. It, look, it just looked like bully ball, man. It was... So, on, on the Zen front... Do we still feel that he's the best in the world? I know that's a tough title and it throw, we throw it around and some people think that, oh, multiple people can be the best in the world at the same time. I, I have been of the belief that until I see someone else do what he does regularly, no one's taking his prize, whether he wins or not. How do you guys feel? No, I feel the same. I think, I think when he launched, you know, when, when he got his uh, <laughs> When they booted start, him up. Yeah, when they when 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 they started the program, I think there was a larger gap, and I think when he inspired everybody to you know try the things that he's trying, whether it's even like the controller layout, you know, all mm -hmm. these people are looking at the um, the trigger air roll, but that that gap is closed. But I, I mean, I feel the same, Michael. I mean, I I would say that from the time that he launched to now, he has been the best player in the world. And are there loads of other players that are very near his skill um, skill level? Absolutely. Absolutely. But he is still such an impact player. And I think this is an example of just how much weight he can carry. I'm not saying he needs to, but he is just a, a huge impact player. And yeah, I mean, I'm still of the opinion he's the best, best in the world for the time being. Yeah, I mean, he's in such a unique position as well, right? He's been in development since he was four. Uh, he tried to get into early access, but that didn't really work out. <laughs> Banned for a year, which really helped him to, to get through all the bugs. And in pre-release, he just showed how amazing he was <laughs> at all the French local lands. And then RLC RLCS comes around, and you're just a triple-A triple A player. It's like Baldur's point. Gate. The minute it came out, everyone's like, yeah, this is the one. Give it all the awards. It's over. You know, yeah. I, I, one thing I want to say, I thought that was funny. Um, so we would all consider this to be sort of an off year for Vitality, right? Compared to last year. Like it's, it's just, the, yeah, it's only off because what they well, did was just unbelievable. Yeah, right, you right? cannot beat. You we're cannot like, even, oh, I don't know, yeah. but Vitality, they're not who they were. They have more points yeah, than yeah. Carmine Corp this season. Zen's off year where everyone keeps saying his players, his teammates need to be kicked versus Vitira, who has always been the guy who people compared to him, putting together a super team. Vitality currently has more RLCS points than they do. Right. Like that, I think, is the perfect sum summary of where Zen is versus the rest of the world. His offseason I mean, is as good as other teams' right. all-time super team. Is this the best team we've ever seen type season? It, it's, it's ridiculous. Let's not look past last split where Vitality really didn't look that, like the best team or even the second best team in Europe. Right. Uh, and that was a, a team thing for sure, but it yeah. wasn't like Zen was just no help. I mean, he, to, he uh, almost dragged them to that final though. In that in that final series yeah, there, against there G2. Were games, oh yeah, absolutely. There were games where he had to step up and he did, but it, like as a whole, mm -hmm. the first split wasn't that yeah. great from Zen. Yeah. But we still, we've seen how much he can do last mm -hmm. season. We've seen it. The first LAN he attended, he wins. The first World Championship he attends, he wins. If, We've seen that, and that doesn't just go away, even if people get a little bit closer, yeah. catch up a mm -hmm. little bit. All and, I'm going to say before this, if if my floor for a player on my team is game seven overtime loss in a yeah. semifinal on LAN, 
Yeah. I think that's the best part. That's ridiculous. Sure, yeah. yeah. That's what I was going to say is like, you know, we're, we're talking about, and, and you're correct, that was a little bit of a lackluster start to the season, and they're still top eight every time. They were one, they were mm-hmm. one goal away from making a major final, and we're like, what's wrong with them? Like, yeah. Is there- <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but, I mean, there's a reason why yeah. we thought no, totally. that, because they literally didn't lose before didn't that. Lose, yeah. man. Holy cow. It's crazy. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm still of the mind that he is the best in the world. And, and, but... I do think it's fair to say that gap is closed. I think there's yeah. plenty of players that have yeah. leveled up. And um, I thought Atto was in Even in NA. This year. Even in NA. This. Even in NA. Yeah. Sam, I thought. I thought. I, thought yeah. I think Kaliers is right there. I think Atto was right yeah. there. He's got to like show us some. I think Beast Mode is right there. Uh, there. There's guys who are right there. Yeah. Definitely. Zen and Vitality destroy their quarterfinal, but then they get worked over by BDS, like we said. BDS said that to pretty much every team they ran into in the bracket. So, but now we've got um, Luna Galaxy, and this is not so much of a happy story. Those you guys remember just a few weeks ago, we were talking about that new squad and Oxygen kind of being those two teams that we hope can maybe threaten the the top four a little bit yeah, and, and bring some parity into Europe. And and unfortunately, that now they've missed the top eight here in the second event. I mean. That's something the format does for you. It's basically over, right? I mean, it's no Carmen Corp, but it's... Michael. <laughs> Hello there, you know, Michael. You were, you were pretty optimistic about that squad. Just you're you're leaning back a little bit, Michael. You have much. notes on your hands that you're reading? <laughs> Guys. Why are you covering I your my face? COVID's, I think my COVID's <laughs> flaring back up. I think I gotta go. Yeah, you gotta go. <laughs> I don't know. Well, see, see you next week. Yeah, you know... I mean, is it, You've got to admit, there was potential. There no, was no, no, no. yeah. I mean, I, was I a had way, squad, I've had but... way worse whiffs. Like, I said Shopify Rebellion and EU Moist were going to be our land teams. Like, I'm not afraid anymore. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, we down at, you know, if you join the Shift Discord where you can actually drop your takes in and have them talked about on our uh, speed taking segment, uh, Tox was in there. Uh, and he was uh, expressing some frustration about his teammate. He was. Teammate lack of uh grinding um you know and i think that was Recently? probably yeah, yes. yeah, yeah right after they lost huh. um, yeah it was pretty it, pissed it, it, he, he, it was definitely he was emotional it was almost right after they they had lost mm. uh he said that they had spoken about it afterward and they had told the teammate who i'm not going to say who it is um but did you guys he, can go back in i mean did he he name? did. He, I mean, he yeah, well, heavily well, implied man. that it was a chronic. Well, someone, someone asked, like, whoa, why would you say that about a chronic? And then he was like, oh, I just don't care anymore. Yeah, so he heavily implied that it was a chronic uh, who was on, I think, 40 past two before a regional, which 40 is... 40 past two. That's not even day job stuff, so... Um, that's not even... I mean, that, that is a proper part-time job. That's 20 hours yeah, a week. Yeah, uh, but unfortunately, uh, you don't get paid a full-time salary for a part-time job, do you? um yeah. either way um listen this is this is europe you know if you want to just phone it in and still make land you come down to where i live because uh you know you got to put in you got to put in all the work and if you're not going to put in the work you can't expect it to, to, to reap any rewards when there are teams that are you know busting Grinding. their balls every single yeah. uh, every single week to, to try to yeah. get top eight top four bro and and look I here to you learn can, american you can, buddy you can be, you can be <laughs> nice you could be grinding as hard as any of them and you still might not yeah exactly europe is i mean it is extremely competitive and very top heavy and the talent has consolidated phenomenally it's it's very tough to bust into that top bit but we also have resolve who had a a, you know a booming start to the split a top four after grabbing razier's alongside that redemption duo of ivan and cash and now they ran into the bulldozer vitality i mean yeah. like i said earlier that that yeah. series was just brutal I mean, it's good that they make it to the quarterfinals it is. But it, you it have to have some consistency it wasn't just a yeah. fluke there yeah mm-hmm. you have to have certain expectations for a team and it, this is not a team you expect in the semi-final yeah. so it makes sense that it has to go down in such a way is right a little bit painful but you know even they on twitter right after the game were like yeah fair enough yeah yeah were, yeah. yeah i mean you, it's it's hard to um, it's hard to feel it's hard to feel like they've done anything wrong. Like you sure. get top yeah. four, <laughs> you you beat a great team yeah. in BDS. In fact, they've done well. Yeah, they've done so well. And, and and the thing is, it's just been a weird split. Like you've had yeah. a team go one first eighth, 
you've had a team go first, fourth, you've had a team with two fourths, and you have a team with fourth, second, right? So it, typically you'd have a bunch of teams at like four, eight, then you have a few teams at like four, two or four, one or two, yeah, one. Yeah. But the four teams that are going to probably go to the major are have kind of split the points up like perfectly right. that a team that's eight, four, which is in like any, like, I mean, I think OG and cloud nine are both sitting in NA right on that fourth spot and resolver eight points back of fourth. So it's right. really just unfortunate. They, you know, they, they've done, I think everything that they, they, yeah, they, they worked hard for it. And uh, we come back back to, uh, the Luna galaxy who maybe haven't worked as hard for it. It's really difficult, of course, to say how much your work will pay off because you can grind a hundred hours in a week and it still might not be enough. Like you said, it, you never know exactly what factors into it. Um, but I feel like a lot of players have said that when they've been grinding, when they've really been working hard for it, it has paid off for them. Yeah. Whether that means get, getting to a playoff records or to a grand final, that really depends on what level, what team they're, they're operating with. But yeah, I mean, they, Great Serve Resolve have played their hearts out and yeah, good to see them in a quarterfinal again because of it. Yeah. They should hold their head high. I mean, you know, everybody wants to, to, to make it to Worlds in Major, but not everybody can. And, and they've, they've shown some prowess here um, in the second half of the split when, like we said earlier, you know, there's been even more consolidation. And so there's more teams that are, are threatening for those tops. So, well, listen, we've got one more qualifier in Europe. Do any of the teams outside of those top four have a chance at making London, or do you guys feel like it's pretty well locked up? It's locked. It's locked. I think all these teams, um, I believe they all basically need a top eight and then Resolve can't win, Right. I want to say. Or no, Resolve could come top two. And if and Resolve, Resolve would have to win, no, because a tiebreaker would be, sorry, top two would be 16 points. So they'd have to come top two. And I think the bottom teams, which are Oxygen and Vitality. BDS. Oxygen and oh, BDS, maybe. Okay. Yeah, they would have to come top yeah, I think eight, there's I a three-way tie, actually. So there would be a whole thing. It's, it's not happening. Like, okay, the, those yeah. teams are going to lock in. They're, they're going to make sure they get their stuff. Well, listen, um, I want that to be the case as well, but I can't say that. Not when we've got a team that KC went first, 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 and now they're 17th. Yeah, until that's fair. These, until they are in the main event, and and one, it's crazy too because you would imagine like main event is where you stress, but no, you stress beforehand. If they get into the main event, I'm confident that those teams will make it deep enough in the Swiss that they'll pull through or or, or get into the playoff bracket or obviously further. But these freaky qualifiers, man, they're spooky. Do you know why I say different? Just for specifically this final qualifier, um, I personally believe that because. Every team, but maybe five in this region, are staring down their final tournament. They're going to be out there being like, let's just go have fun. Half of them are going to be playing with new teams because this always happens in Europe where for some reason everybody breaks up after the second last regional and then they all put together pickup teams for the final regional. So I think just like the lack of continuity and like the sort of lack of seriousness that's going to come from these final qualifiers it could be bad like you could just end up getting peaked that, down by you're three saying that players. and i'm sitting there thinking like that but means I, I these teams are gonna fun. pop off i think i think i think if any team's gonna gonna get uh gonna have a problem with it it would be gentle mates because they they play a very like, clear way i think you're fine because i think there's i think joyo specifically if you try to do that silly like oh let's just have fun he's just gonna clip on you over and over again same with zen they they they've definitely taken it very serious i've talked yeah. to them on different occasions and and I mean, this is it. They, they, I would, they, they, I would be less worried about them than anybody because they actually have to. Like the, every point matters for them. For the other well, ones, and, like and Joyo's above. felt it too. Yeah, exactly. You know, he's missed a main event, and I think mm -hmm. that that has helped them kind of realize like you can't, you cannot mess around with these teams. You cannot mess around in quals. So, yeah, they know what it takes. Uh, it's still going to be an outside chance, I guess, for other teams. Uh, it looks, it looks very much like a done deal for sure. Vitality, Gentlemates, Oxygen, and BDS, right? Yeah. Those yeah. last three are equal in points right now, 28. Um, and yeah, Resolve is the closest behind with 20. Right. But it, it, it would be a little bit different if it was KC in that four spot. Eight yeah, behind, it, right? it definitely it would be. Yeah. KC so right resolved, now... Not so... They would, yeah, KC would need to win and one of those teams would have to miss main event, I think. Yes. 
Yeah. So well, you get um, one point for missing main event, so they could force a tiebreaker with a win. Huh. Because they're 19 points back. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's just incredibly unlikely. That would be crazy. Okay, Can you imagine it's missing a main event? Too. If BDS want to miss and then Carmi Corp go major. <laughs> Can you imagine oh, BDS, or let's say BDS miss? And then Karmicore win, and they have to get up after like not playing the whole event and play a best of seven tiebreaker for their season. Dude. That you can't, you cannot envy anybody who has to do that. I'll tell you no, that. That'd be miserable. Jeez. <laughs> that would be terrible. It, here's the thing, though. We're, we're outlining all these crazy scenarios, and we talk about how it looks like it's locked, but we've seen crazy stuff happen all season through these qualifiers, through Swiss, at, you know, at every phase of the event. So you're going to want to be tuned in to these last qualifiers for every region. There's so much on the line. Let's talk about OCE. Fiber. This is huge news. This is brand new today as well. Mm -hmm. Fiber announces he is benched by Pioneers. They're going to be playing with their coach, coach. Who, who's also a very high-level player. Mm. His name is Mock. Um, after their loss to the Chiefs in top four, have the Pioneers, I mean, are, is this like, is this a panic button? Is it, What are we doing here? Do you think that they should have just stuck with what they got? I mean, it's it feels like it's got to be something internal. Oh, yeah. It, yeah, it definitely it. is. It's... Say Sorry? the thing. Say the thing. Say the thing. Say, say the, the thing. thing. Say on. the line. I will say, say the thing. Roster <laughs> changes are usually to do with outside factors, not right, gameplay. Right. And in, in this case, we actually kind of know because in his tweet announcing that he's stepping down from the roster, um, he said that they weren't on the same line. The, there, there were some... Uh, the, some issues through to figure out between the players and obviously it didn't work. Um, it, yeah, it, it, it looks like it's kind of over for them. I mean, they weren't in the spot that they were last split, so it's a little bit harder for them. Um, but, you know, they're they're still making top four. They're, they're still up there. It's just, yeah, it's, it's a little sad to see that one of the contenders in OC is kind of making a, a move like this that really doesn't make... A contender out of them anymore. I mean, their right. coach isn't a bad player, but I don't see them being the quick tech pioneers from yesterday. Yeah, I mean, and I think I think they they were just, they've been a disappointment. Like, let's be honest, we were all talking about this team maybe being the power, the team to finally challenge power, um, and it's ended up being Chiefs. Uh, funny enough, who have pushed them the hardest. Uh, and oh yeah, Chiefs it's are, great for Chiefs. Yeah, well, Chiefs are about to make worlds. Like Chiefs, yeah, basically, they if they if they make major, they make worlds. Yeah. Um, which is where, you know, you kind of get the idea of maybe this is a panic button because it's starting to set in for the pioneers. Like, Hey, we need sure. to, something needs to happen or we're not going to go to the major and we're not going to go to worlds. Our season will be over next weekend if we don't like figure something out. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, it's a disappointment. Um, these, this was supposed to be the team and, uh, yeah. power, you know, for all the, for all the, what's the word I'm looking for? The criticism, or I guess the, the non-belief in power. One thing you can't say is that they didn't do exactly what they set out to do, which was dominate OCE. And, pa and Pioneers hasn't been able to do that, right? So, yeah. It's They're five for five. Um, so, we got Pioneers and Falcons, who could go six for six this season. Mm -hmm. um, and those are the only two teams that could do so. Yeah, Everyone yep. else has already had multiple winners. So, looking to uh, etch their names yeah. in the history books there. Yeah, it's well, it's a little bit of a weird way to go like this, but it's it's amazing for our Chiefs. Yeah, to, well, that's to, what I was gonna say. Let's let's talk about the Chiefs because these are names yeah. that we really haven't. I mean, throughout the season, we really haven't mentioned a whole lot. I know that we've briefly touched on them that's here right. and there, but I think we've mostly focused on those those six players on those top two teams. We've got um, Chiefs, which is now or or formerly Kaka's minions, and like Michael said, they're unless something crazy happens, they're gonna be at major and world. So they'll be that OCE two seed. Which yeah. is amazing because that means that Finn, uh, one of the shift staff members, uh, will be able to interview Finn, the Fantastic. player for Chiefs. What? what so else he's already for, called really? dibs on that. Uh, that's funny. He's already called dibs. Like if Finn is making it and it's looking very likely, then he wants to interview Finn. Um. Yeah. I mean, I I've noticed. I've watched some OC. You know, OC after dark. What's better than that? Um, you know, Hunter looks like the player I think people thought he was going to be. Yeah. Uh, it seems like, you know, he's always been kind of like dual committed to other stuff outside the game. I believe he's a basketball player. Uh, maybe he stopped because he looks locked in this season. And I think he's exactly who uh, we thought he was going to be when he kind of debuted as like the new replacement for 
super lucky uh, last year. You know what it feels like? It's not the exact same like recipe, but it feels similar to last season's Space Station, mm -hmm. where everybody's looking at where Daniel went at V1. We're looking at other things, and we thought, eh, yeah, Space Station will be they'll be pretty good with Hawkser, but mm -hmm. you know, we're not we're not really looking at them. And then here they go, they storm their way to the major. Yeah. It feels kind of similar here where totally. I know I was definitely looking at Pioneers. I thought that Lockheed pickup would be exactly what they needed to maybe even take number one seat. Mm -hmm. And um, here we have Chiefs just quietly working away, two well, top twos. Kaka's minions, I believe, was, I mean, I'm not believe, I know, was in like serious contention for the first major. And, and I think they just ran into power early in the bracket or they might have went out early in Swiss. Uh, but they were there. Like the, the uh, Shores and Finn have been, is it, is it Shores and Finn? Yeah. Um, yeah, they, they've been like right there, but I think LBP as their coach, I think maybe yeah. they didn't have a coach last season. So I think, you know, having LBP come in, maybe teach them a little bit more about the game, about sure. threes probably helped them a lot. And it, it, it's cool to see something like that happen. It seems like it may have been a, a pretty good team composition fit mm -hmm. for Hunter as well to kind of elevate his game a little totally. bit. Totally. So OCE. Cause they played with Gus, I think previously and Gus yeah, is very much like a mechy sort of gotcha. thing so yeah that could definitely okay. be part of it well OCE is looking um you know pretty well chiseled obviously we mentioned it earlier with europe they've got to make it through the qualifiers they've got to take care of business but they should be doing so these teams have done just that in the first two events yeah and for the old rlcs fans who've been watching league uh, play era uh, it's amazing to see chiefs back again because yeah. they yeah. were the the team that could actually perform internationally they were they, they had a clash with uh, the north american teams yeah NRG uh, used to whoop them NRG, used to yep. whoop NRG every single time they played not every that was time, a right like, maybe not the most yeah. logical rivalry but it was definitely a cj rivalry. cj man the guy dominated yan dominated justin it's like like what's what what was his deal <laughs> <laughs> like, the math ain't just show the up math. and whoop whoop one all time like great player and then they're like a great team and then just kind of fall out. I mean, he did make that top four, but you know, you know. Yeah, talking. and so they disbanded in early 2020, mm -hmm. um, before COVID even hit, and so we didn't even go online yet. And now they're so back. Yeah. So back. Exciting times. Well, we've got some more excitement over in APAC. Because we have been wrong again. We have no idea what we're talking about when it comes to APAC. We cannot What's figure new? it out. Or maybe, maybe we are wielding our powers for good and making that region as exciting as possible. We've got a showdown between Elevate and Gladiators. Each of them has one, one regional, the other coming second in that regional as well. So they are deadlocked in points, the exact same amount. And just like we saw in the first split, it's going to come down to this final event to decide who takes that singular APAC seed for major number two in London. And there's a good chance it will also decide Worlds. Mm. Well, no, because they're deadlocked it seems like that's kind of the I think they're deadlocked in region. points for the this... whole season. Like, I believe that they are literally tied. Oh, are they actually? I, I, I want to say so. Because I thought I... there was a scenario where it wasn't decided yet if Gladiators went to... Hold on, I might have read it differently. I'm going to check right now. Because be. APAC, or because uh, Elevate was at the major, right? Yeah, yeah, but I think right? Elevate came like a... top eight or top four once. Oh, no, you guys oh, are right. You guys might... are right. They're eight yes, points ahead. I think ahead. there's, there's a possibility ahead. where it's not locked for the major yet, and it will have to be decided by Gladiator's placements in London. Right. But if Elevate win, obviously, they were going to two majors, so they're also going to Worlds. But it's 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 going to be close, and it's like we predicted. So there, we might not be wrong still. We might be very much might be but there's a possibility we get this right that it will be decided in the last region where we got that right and maybe even in the grand finals and the grand finals we need to talk about the grand finals from this past mm -hmm. regional because that was madness it i mean was it was such so a close good. series i was i was watching it live from the the co-caster from boy arroyo and gex um and Koken was streaming it in, in in japanese and the first Four games were so close. They were mm -hmm. so interesting to watch. They were, they were really two teams who were at each other's levels, right? And playing to their own level, playing to the other. They were really putting up a good fight, low scoring games. And then something's broken, as Kokken put it. Something's broken in that game five. And we had the highest scoring 
game in the playoff bracket ever. 12 to 6. <laughs> 12 points. Dude, it, that was like the strangest game. I went back and watched it. I was like, I need to see what happened here. Like, was there a DC thing? Tech issues? They just no. weren't guarding the net. Like, it was just like, let's let's just... Everyone gets the ball. Everyone gets to go off the wall. Let's see what happens. Like, it was like watching a, 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 a private match between friends who were just trying to, like, screw around before maybe a scrim. It, it was... It was well, ridiculous. It, it, it went really quick. We had some quick goals. Maybe not kickoff goals, but <clears throat> I might as well call them kickoff goals because they arrived from the same situation. And... Instantly, Gladiators were up 4-0 and 5-0. But by the time we were getting to that 5-0, you could see that Elevate... I mean, there were still three and a half minutes or something to play, mm -hmm. but they were getting in that mindset that you have when there's 30 seconds on the clock and you're two or three goals behind and you're like, yeah. something needs to happen. Screw defense, all out trying to hit the ball into the net. And yeah, if you don't get countered, the ball is just going to roll in and roll in and roll in until we hit 12. It was oh, insane. It's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. And also, I think it's a record or almost a record for highest. I think it's a record for highest goals, highest number of goals scored by a losing team. Six. Oh, yes, I saw that. Yeah, that's right. So score six I goals and still lose cool. the game is. <laughs> I'm surprised no one's ever lost like seven six in our OCS. That seems like something that would happen in o OCE. OCE, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that might be something. OCE, but yeah, no after that, it was over. Gladiators just ran away with it, and honestly, it kind of surprised me over again, all over again. That Elevate were so close to challenging Tho and his team. That's an achievement. Well. There's another example of why you need to be tapped into these next couple of events. Um, open Qualifier 6 for every region and the Major. Yens talked about it. These performances at these events are going to determine who gets to go to Worlds. And Worlds is a ways off. It's in September. But we've got a couple of really, really, really exciting events coming up over the next three or four weeks. Um, and all these players, like, their, their full season comes down to this. I mean, we, we'll... we'll um, We'll cover some more about North America and some of their team. Some of these teams have had their seasons ended early because they missed the main event. And we'll cover that here in a moment. But before we do, we're going to have Yens do his uh, top 16 this week. And just like we did last time with Michael, um, we're going to pick one of these teams that he has placed uh, and kind of, you know, poke and prod at it a bit. We'll, we'll tell him what we think is wrong with that selection. So, Yens, if you want to take the floor here and Reveal your top 16 for the uh, audience. The floor is sure. yours. What order? what order did we do it last time? Uh, 16 one, two, to 16? One. 16, 16 to 1, right? Yeah. Mm. Okay. Well, we'll start off 16th. Team Secrets. They were just in there. It was hard to place. It. It's always hard to place the teams outside of the top 10, I feel like. Harder than in yeah. the top 10. And then we have Grid Surf Resolve, which haven't shown as much prowess as last time, right. but they still showed up. 14th is Complexity, who I would have expected more from, right? Um, but they're still a very solid team from South America. Jobless is next in 13th, who were okay, um, but not challenging the best teams in Europe. Yeah. Twisted Minds in 12th mm -hmm. is still a very strong contender from Mina. In 11th, we have Ninjas in Pajamas, which, which run away with the victory in South America, beat Complexity on the way, but also Furia. Such a fun event for them. That was crazy. That was a great... And then in 10th place, we have Gen G, who have shown up throughout the season, but haven't shown the same level as the other North American teams. I'm just gonna continue. We, we have we'll wait. Furia we'll wait till the ninth. end. <laughs> yeah, we'll do that. We'll do that. We have Furia in ninth because they're still a very solid team, only coming second to a very on fire Ninja Jam Pajamas. Space Station Gaming in eighth because they're actually making a case for themselves now, uh, not just out of potential but out of 
actual results. Seventh is Carmine Corp, who are dropping quite a bit, but you know, they're Carmine Corp. He's One boiling. Let's put Caliente <laughs> in there too, bro. Why not? <laughs> like, uh, why not? Throw TSM yeah, top well, five. Why not? Almost at the bomb. Okay. <laughs> Sixth team Falcons. They're still the best team in Mina. Fifth, Gentlemates Alpine. Who were, of course, the winners of the last major, but have not shown the same levels online. In fourth, Oxygen Esports, a team that's been beating Gentlemates and beating quite a few other good teams on the way. Third, G2 Stride, the best team in North America and the team that I see challenging Europe in the, at the major. Team Vitality in second, and Team BDS in first for the two European teams who right now are yeah. at the top of Michael, Europe. Go. You know, time before out. we start... Wait, wait, time out, time out. Oh, okay, sorry. Don't I, go. Said, I thought you said go. Time out, time out. All right. I'm not going to say my thing yet. We'll let Michael go first, but I do have a question. Yeah. I want, we want to we wanna allow Jens to elaborate here. You've got sure. Auction as a fourth best team. Just earlier in this episode, you were saying to Michael's claim that they look like they could be a major contender. You said that they're not there yet, yet you've got them here yeah, over, I, over I'm, the reigning I'm major ranking, champions at the moment. I'm power ranking how are they playing right now at the LAN and in an offline, at an offline event. I feel like this would look different. Okay. If I would, if I would draft the the standings for right. London, I would have them in different positions. Okay. All right, so land versus online. Okay. Michael, do your So, thing. you know, I came here with my nice Rihanna glasses today. I'm taking them off. I'm putting on some normal glasses because that, that list was so ass that I, I don't even want my normal glasses to be to be seen. All right, I got I got a lot of issues. First of all, get swap at, I'm sorry, I don't care what your twisted reasoning is. If you beat a team every single time you play, that team is better than you. So get SSG down to 10 and pull Gen G up to 8. I had Gen G at 7 on my shift 16 list, so I'm not trying to be a homer. I'm, they didn't have a good week, but I how if I kick your ass 3 times in the street, no one's going <laughs> to say you're a better fighter than me. I'll tell you that. It wasn't a close game too. I was foot on your neck. Boom, boom. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. And so enough with that. That's ridiculous. But I don't want to talk about that because that's like we talk about it every week. I would love to know your reasoning why Team Falcons isn't at least top five. Because besides a really bad series against Gentlemates, they looked as good as anyone at the major. And they're five for five in Mina, which is a, reg which is a region that I feel like you value quite highly. Um, for a team that is winning constantly, looks on par with the best teams in Europe, and you know, versus a lot of super inconsistent teams like BDS and 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 uh, as well as I mean, even I, I like the Oxygen guys, but they on a power ranking, I don't see how you can put a team that finishes first in their region every time and looked as good as anybody against the teams that Oxygen plays against. Of Oxygen. So I would like to see Oxygen a little high. I mean, sorry, I would like to see Falcons yeah, I mean, a little they're, high. They're they're incredibly close in my mind. Those those especially ooh, uh, fourth, fifth position, yeah, Oxygen or Gentlemates or sixth for Team Falcons. I mean, you can turn those any way you want. It, it's a it's a slight balance between recency bias and longevity. And I just couldn't get uh, a team that's won the last major out of the top five. Was it so? How much did the European casters pay you to make sure that all the European teams were above Falcons? Because I know Johnny probably. <laughs> I know. I know the Johnny Boy Mina Union probably gave you a pretty penny to try to put Falcons a little higher. So like the Colin Stumpy Foundation must be funding your pockets, pal, because that's all I can see. Chen Chi number ten. I should well. sue you. I should <laughs> sue you for that blasphemy. Anyway, let's not talk about it. That's that's a tie-dye. Like, Hootie, your okay. turn. I mean, I, I, you've left me no choice. I really don't want to do this, but... I, 
I don't understand how oxygen's at four. <laughs> really? Yeah, well, you've I seen don't, him play, I don't understand. Right? No, I'm, listen, I'm, I'm trying not to be like anybody, play. but we've got, a top, we've got a top four and a top two. We haven't even won an event yet. And you've got Team Falcons there, who has won every event in Mina, went to the major and looked like one of the best teams in the world, top four, top five at least. Gentlemates has been uh, just as consistent or more consistent than us, at least towards the top, and the major champions. Sure, we just beat them once, uh, but they've beaten us every other time this season. Listen, yeah, wait, hold like on. I, said, I didn't want to do this. I don't. I, who likes to request that their own team be lower in a list? But I, I just, especially really? because, you know, I, I hear your land versus online, but I'm, I'm getting conflicting views here. We've, we've got them so high, but they're not major contenders. I, I can't. Well, I can't understand. Hoodie, as you know, when you beat a team, they're supposed to go higher than you. So clearly, gentlemen should be over. Should be over oxygen because oxygen won their head to head matchup. That's the the logic we're working with here. Oh, so. oh. right. So that's yeah. That I must understand. have been a typo or something. I don't know. Wait, is it higher number better? Maybe. <laughs> yes, exactly. I just try not to be a Wikipedia watcher. I try oh. to actually watch the games. Lando, sure. you're not here. Can we pull up first killer versus oxygen? Uh, two years ago, fall major game seven. Two Thank you. Two years ago. Two years ago. Okay. Let's watch okay, some hold tape. On. Let's hear that. Okay, buddy. Anyway, no, I, I try continue. to watch the games, and I, I really think that Oxygen have the potential to, right now, in this moment, that's what we're working with, to beat all but, like, three teams in the world. So you don't think they can beat anyone above them? Oh, yeah, of course they can, but, okay, like... Okay, sorry, I just want to clear that up, like, not to, to be, like, a hater, predict, but, like, that's, yeah, like, a Yeah, if I have to thing. predict the scores, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So no, you're, I you're, just wanted to make sure that that wasn't, over like, Team Falcons. Yeah, I would at the moment, yeah. Okay, I like that, Yins. I mean, like I said, it's just so incredibly close, but that's what I'm going with. Yeah, okay. I I mean, I'm, I'm similar to Michael. We'll just ignore the SSG thing. I also think that's pretty wild. Nah, he's just hating. <laughs> like, come on. He knew. He, he came here to bother me after I was I couldn't tell if he froze. <laughs> I couldn't tell if he froze. I thought he lagged. <laughs> 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 whatever i let's i okay. i, I, I want to be the underdog i want to be the underdog i want everyone to hate on us say, well i'm i'm giving it to you for free yeah. there you go you should say thank you you know what i was gonna buy a jersey it went when gen g win the world championship i think i'm gonna make yens buy it for me i think i'm gonna make him pay for it because of that <laughs> checks it. i'll I'll send you a I'll request on paypal <clears throat> if they win the major i'm buying you a, a jersey Digital, digital shake, it in, please. it's here. Digital shake. How you Thank you. Thank you. Nice. <laughs> Incredible. So there's Yin's a top 16. Do remember that is right now. Like you said, it's a power mm -hmm. ranking. What he sees right now, what he thinks could happen at this very moment. Next time we meet, I'm sure things will be different after oh, yeah. we see some more events this upcoming weekend. So that's going to conclude the top half of the show. We're going to move on to regional previews. And first up, we've got North America. There are five teams that stand a chance to steal London's final spot from North America. We've got G2, we've got Gen G, and we've got Space Station. G2 is the only one that's fully locked, but Gen G and Space Station have a big lead on everyone. And, and mm -hmm. if history uh, tells us anything, they're probably going to be top eight, top four, maybe in the grand finals. So we feel confident that Space Station and Gen G are going to lock yeah. in that two and three spot. But there's one more. Who do we think it could be? Um, so I'm, I'm going to look at OG here. I think OG, mm -hmm. you know, obviously how like Canadian naps, we can do all that. But I, I just think that this team has like the pedigree to sure. like to them making majors is the standard. Yeah. So I think and I think a lot of I think a lot of teams bring different baggage into this that they don't. If you look at the five teams, right, you got OG alongside the go, snowman. Go, and say the say the uh, points amount too. Wow. So OG and Cloud9 are on 24. Cloud9, I'm sure they believe that they would be here fighting fighting for a major spot but for all three of them this would be their first major and i believe that that will be an incredible amount of pressure they're going to put on themselves sure. Sure. um which i don't love for a team that is so defensive right when you're when you your your play style is designed for to sort of counterattack. you can't be nervous because those mechanical mistakes will will cost you really bad the snowmen yeah. are on 22 they did not look good in quals at all they almost got kicked out top for 48 yeah. or something um Shopify have shown us nothing that they can do anything with any top teams. They've gotten shellacked every single time they had to play a good team. Um, and who's the last? Oh, M80. 
we'll talk about that later. But like, you know, if you're going to bet on M80, I have a horse, I have a, a bridge to sell you, you know, because <laughs> that is, you know, the, the, the data shows otherwise. But yeah, I think OG, they, they just, this is what they do. Like though these players have been here so many times. Yeah. Um, J Naps has made, I think eight of the nine lands. Nolly's made five, Com's made five, I think. They're all land winners in different capacities. I think they're just going to approach this as like, you know, we've been here a bunch of times. They were in the same position last split where they needed to perform well to make it. They boot camped, all that stuff. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm looking at OG and I, I feel like that's the team that I would be, I would feel the most secure and like placing a wager on, for example, even though no gambling. But like, you know what I'm saying? I guess that's really what our disagreement over the the shift shift cost 16 comes down to i don't just don't really rate og that highly and i hate that i don't because there's just not that much better competition in that bracket right now in mm -hmm, north yeah. america so yes they have a, a chance at making that major um but <laughs> and yeah they beat gen g but honestly i think that's something that Gen G should really look at themselves for. It was going to um, happen. He Nolly was going to beat Gen G at one point. Like he needed to be able to tweet his Mike Wazowski meme, even though it was like four <laughs> months later or whatever. He didn't do it, but like he could have, you know. It could have, yeah. Uh, I just don't rate I think that hit. OG <laughs> four months at late. the moment, which is why I don't rate Gen G as highly because they lose to them. But if we're just talking about who is going to be there with. G2, Gen G, and Space Station. It's so. It's, there's like no actually good. They're all <laughs> decent, but there's no actually good fourth. It, it, it sucks. I, I would have see, liked to see it differently. Um, yeah, the, the team right now in, in the prime position to do it, the teams, plural, are Cloud9 and OG. I guess OG because Cloud9, yeah, maybe not. It, it, what sucks, what really sucks, is that Dignitas didn't show up during the first regional because I yeah. feel like that's a team that might actually have a really good chance at doing well in the third one. Yeah, they they I'm, looked quite good in the yeah. second regional, and they look good. They in only the have thirteen points now. They're in. They would need uh, to win. They would need twelve. Yeah, they they need to play better than they have. I think yeah. it's if they win and and none of those. I think it's if they, it would they would need to win to get on thirty three. Yeah. Then M eighty and sorry Snowman and OG would have to only get top eight. And um, cloud nine and against then two. cloud sorry cloud cloud nine Snowman and OG and then Shopify yeah. couldn't get top two and, and M eighty couldn't get yeah, top two. Yeah, that's just like statistically it's not too happening. unlikely, unfortunately. Yeah. But I would have liked. For them to do better in open qualifier four, so they can actually show it in six. Eh. So you're both going OG. Uh, I guess so, but not because I'd like to. <laughs> Feels like somebody's like forcing you. Got his arm yeah. twisted or something. Well, I'm gonna tell you this. I'm riding. I'm rocking with the young guns. Snowmen have a mm. path. Not only do they have a path to the major, they even have a path to worlds. They do. And they're gonna have to go I absolutely like crazy. I like that more than OG. OG is just a little bit crazy. more likely, but they have to, yeah. But I think it's young talent, and ultimately what I really think is it would be fun. I think it would be fun to see that team qualify for a land. They're a young, a young squad. They have lots of mechanical talent. I think as they get more experience at this, uh, you know, at this level with this kind of pressure, with this intensity, and that major would give them a lot of experience with that. Um, you know, as they get more of that, I think they... I think they really could assert themselves in that top four, top five area consistently with North America alongside, you know, teams like Space Station. And, and what I, what we should see from M80, and we haven't seen it yet, but I think that that talent level, you know. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, go, I'm rocking with Snowman. I think what they've got to do is they've got to go top four, and they can't have Cloud9 and OG be in that top four. They mm -hmm. basically need to go one round further. Yeah. So yeah. and 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 if they do, it's a clean it's a clean victory for them. They don't even have to worry about the um, the tiebreaker or anything. So, and it's possible they've been top four once this split. I think they, they you know they have the mechanics and ability to do so. But Is that true? If, said, I think um, if, if Shopify win the event or M80, then they still have to right, worry. Yeah, we're talking about realistic sure. scenarios here. That's Shopify true. wins. Realistic scenarios. 
<laughs> it is technically possible. It Justin would be something that trophy, we haven't seen I will buy, I'll buy a shop you. fire buying jersey. Yeah, if they make it for a dare. So I'm I'm rocking with Snowman. Like I said, it's mostly because I think it would be a fun story. Yeah, totally. um, and here's the thing. Like I said, if they do make major, they will hop into the top four if they go top eight at the major. So Snowman, wow. they can they can surge straight to Worlds. Yeah. Now, obviously, top eight is a huge ask for a young team like that at a first time land. But we've seen we've seen some crazy stuff happen before, especially with young, young stuff, hot too. talent. So, well, that's like I got my you know, you know, you know who OG won't take. be at the at the at the major most likely and Ooh. won't be at Worlds is the team Ooh. I mentioned a while back, uh, M80. Uh, yeah. M80 has a chance to do something incredible. OK, one of the most incredible things that's ever been done. <laughs> Sure, M80 us. is currently six games over 500. They are 15 and nine in their series across the uh, the season. They have a chance to go 18 and 10, almost a two to one win to loss ratio, and not make a single LAN event. That's impressive. That's impressive stuff. You have or, to admit. Or a top four. That's all they have to do, Hootie. They have to win <laughs> one series. They have lost five top eights to five unique different teams. This is not a bracketed thing. They've lost to teams that have... I, I actually was looking it up the other day. Of the teams they've lost to, I believe outside of SSG? No. It was... They lost to C9, who've missed a regional. They've lost to Dignitas, I think, who've missed a regional. They lost to... Oh, no, they haven't TSM. lost to Dignitas. They lost to TSM, lost, missed a regional. They've lost to Shopify Rebellion, who've missed a regional. So almost all of their losses have come teams who no can't excuse, even make a main event sometimes. <laughs> right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. Snowman yeah. were the other one that, that missed a regional that made top four. So my question for you, you guys, is, you know, it's we've, we've bought, it's been the whole season we've been asking, is this finally the time that the that Team M80 make it to the semifinals? Are you... Are you Buying it one last time after all there the losses. There is no reason to buy into that. No offense to Cloud9, but you cannot lose 4-2 to Zinil, Percy, and Lion Blaze. Well, you can. You they cannot just did. Yeah, well, you, but you can't <laughs> sweep the Swiss stage and then lose 4-2 to Cloud9. Well, uh, there is no reason for me to believe in that team anymore. I said it last week. I'll say it again. I, yeah, that, I don't... Totally disagree, but Cloud9 did take G2 to seven. Yeah. Yes, they did. So they were playing well. Yeah, they But they were. played a lot better but in that G2 the series. They did not barely play well. That's just one of their five losses. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's why it's <laughs> barely an excuse. Every, every event. The TSM yeah. loss is a little it's a little un, it's a little unforgivable. Like TSM has gone has missed a regional and gone nine twelve twice. Uh, fourth, 12, 14, twice, and then top four because they snuck into the playoffs and got mm -hmm. and and beat M eighty like M eighty, yeah. It's it's and bad. That I I don't understand the team. I don't, I don't get, get it. it. I don't understand. There's so much talent, and and they have done. They have played incredible in Swiss. Last Swiss, they beat G two and Gen G. It the two top teams. They have beaten Gen G. Then you get Gen to the quarterfinals. Yeah. I don't and understand. If if you're lucky enough to draw M80 in the quarterfinals, it's basically a buy at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what's what's crazy <laughs> to me really rough. It is. I just and it's talent, man. There's yeah. so much talent on that team. I just don't understand how they can't pull it together just once. So here's my question no, not, for you guys. Maybe not every time, but just once. The turning point for the M80 Cloud9 series it was the timeout. Cloud9 took a timeout and rattled three straight off. Do you think that might be? Part of it is that when the timeout comes into factor, when teams are allowed to slow momentum and teams are allowed to um, sort of take a timeout, I, figure I out what say, they're doing, it's an issue. I would say that you're onto something with the mentality side of it. But it almost just feels like they're like that's their grand finals. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like they have to get past top eight and that's their grand finals. They just feel so much pressure. And like we we're joking about it at the beginning of the season. Jory has even tweeted about it. Never beaten the Swiss allegations. And it's not it's funny anymore. <laughs> it's not exactly. funny anymore. Exactly. It's real now. <laughs> That's crazy, yeah. man. That's crazy. I, I love you, August, but you, yeah, it's it's tough. Yeah. Can't do that. It's well, are you saying it's a Nick curse? Uh, one of the. Michael. Yeah. Can we say that a little curse. differently? 
Um, but yeah, no, I mean, Nick came on our, our show and, and he said it right. Or he, we interviewed him, I believe one of the two. And he said, this would be the biggest failure of my career. If this was doesn't an work from yeah, it was an interview. Yeah. Sorry. It was a shift uh, property is what I'm saying. Um, Fine and so sense. he's on the clock, right? He has admitted he's himself. He's on the clock. He's admitted himself. One chance. Yeah. Listen, if I don't make this work, this is going to have an, like, this will impact my career. And it's up to him to convey that to his, his, his players. Like, Hey, we built this project. The org and I built this project because we believed in you guys as a unit to be like, there was something here. Like we have to figure it out. There's no more extra chances. We were lucky enough that we play in this region where there's a lot of parity outside of the top two that we can actually still make it. So we, we got to We got to figure it out or else, you know, all three of all four of our careers will take a serious downturn. We're gonna have to work our way back up because there's going to be out, yeah. like these, this narrative stuck around all of us that if you pick us yeah. up, we're not going to perform in the biggest moments. Yeah, that's exactly what's going to happen. Whether it's, and it might not be chance. vindicated. I mean, justified, right? I'm not saying that these guys sure, are all chokers, sure. but that's, right. that's what they're right. going to say. That's what it's going to be. Well, they got one final chance. You know, it's it's literally now or never. So, mm -hmm. uh, TSM, we've got another, unfortunately, negative story here. They did not qualify. They fall out top 32. They got eliminated by Yapville. <laughs> they got eliminated by us. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Yapville. <laughs> yeah, but can you remind to the viewers and listeners who Yapville is? It is that I talks can't. team? I actually can't. I don't know who it right, is. Let me, let me let me look it up. I, I believe they it's... They don't have a Wikipedia page either. You have to go to start. Oh. Okay. <laughs> well, you guys keep going while I look. I, I thought... It, I, I'm, I'm thinking the wrong team. I thought it was Talk T. Corral and T. Var, but uh -uh. that's definitely uh -uh. not it. I, to, dude, so, like, I used to coach at the mm -hmm. bubble level, and, you know, I, I'm, I'm tapped into, like, ones and, and community events, and I, I, I didn't, you know, I think I recognized one of the players... And that doesn't mean that they're not good. You know, they may have been more recent come ups, but for a team of the caliber of TSM, yeah, you just can't be losing those. Yeah, it's uh, and the players were really down and out about it, and understandably so. Yeah, it's uh, uh, sorry, it's Ren Sauce Martin and uh, Swift. I don't know which who, who's the coach or or not. I think but, it's you Ren know. Sauce and. Who was the third one? Martin. Martin? Yeah, MTRTN. Legends. Are they next yeah. up in any? I mean, that's the... Uh, no, no, they're not. That's the <laughs> maybe, hardest maybe question. Next. Yeah, well, maybe. Here, if here's, uh, you know, here's an interesting thing. And, you know, there's a ton of buzz about the format. And I think a lot of people that fall on the opposing side that there's no problem with format. I think a lot of their rebuttal and argument is through the lens of, like, Carmi Corp deserve to lose. And that's why they're angry. They're not looking at like, they're looking at one team and they think yeah. everybody's making an excuse for the one team. There's no excuse for Carmi Corp missing. They deserve that result. They deserve that one single point that they got. They had a bad day. Just like everybody else, you know, that, that struggled. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that there can't be something wrong with the format at large. We've got five out of the 10 teams that made a top four in North America miss at least one regional throughout the season yeah it was... and listen we're, we're, uh, the, the thing is it's not about it's not about coddling or babying or handing certain teams or certain players it's not about that it's about creating a format that promotes consistency from a player and organization standpoint because it is you you need you need all parties you can't have players and psionics and no orgs because fewer players will pursue pro play there's no paycheck you can't have orgs and psionics because, you know, then the players will obviously be taken advantage of. And then, of course, we need psionics and, and RLCS. So you, you've got to have something that yeah. balances all of it. And right well, now, I think this is just, it's so volatile that it will, it's going to lead to some orgs leaving. It's going to lead long term to less players wanting to play. I mean, we've seen Squishy retired. And a big part of why he retired is he said this format is, is just, it's just very volatile. Yeah, it's it's tough to, to manage. Squishy yeah. And muffins. I want to say this too. Because, I'm sorry, I'm on a rant here. The thing is, like, we're looking at just that top eight auto qual. I promise you, those teams that were 9 through 16 appreciate the fact that they were in Sunday. And they appreciate the fact that Sunday meant something. 
you see Growley and them tweeting out, dying, uh, all tweeting about it. Those Sundays were, it wasn't main event, but it was an event. It was something. It was 16 of the best teams in that region. Now, it was 9 through 24, but it was still 16 of the best teams in that region, and it felt more premier. It felt more professional. These qualifiers yeah. don't feel, they don't have that same feeling. They're they just feel chaotic. Silly. They're chaotic. And for some reason, some people are still stuck with this idea that creating more security for the teams performing is less fair, like creates yeah. a clo more closer system. But look at it this way. Everybody likes Swiss stage, right? It's yeah. great, yeah. great fun to watch, but it's also great for the players. And is it unfair that players can lose to series and still make it to the top eight? No, of course it isn't. So why would it be unfair for people to get uh, earn also earn their earn, way into right, a qualification, into a closed uh, qualifier well, or yeah. whatever? In general, like why have multiple events if it's unfair for teams to bypass? Like why not we just have right. one big yeah. qualifier and then the best teams from that qualifier go to the major? Because it's like. Right. You know, like they, the points carry over because anyway. you want to award yeah. consistency. And, you and want and to what say, that well, does, like people can do it three yeah. times. Exactly. It's like, caught, like, listen, I am as much of a KC hater. I didn't get to talk about it last week. I am as much of a KC hater as anybody. I despise that team. But listen, <laughs> do I think that that team should be allowed, should be bypassed into the main event? Of course. They've been the best team in they the region. They won all three regionals. And if you want to figure out who the best team in a region is over three qualifiers, yeah, let me. it's a pretty good hint if the team that won the last three qualifiers is in the event. Like, oh, that team yeah. is probably the best team right now. We should put them in. Um, and that, and it, it just makes no sense to me. It makes no, the, the, the argument about like, oh, auto qual is bad because it doesn't give people enough chances. These are players who have proven to you for three to five years they're good enough to be in the league. Put them in the league. Like it's that simple. It, there shouldn't be an well, argument from anybody. An important part that you're, you're you're kind of alluding to right there is like you RLCS, like in its full intention, is to be a premier event featuring the absolute the best, best in the world. teams. And this format is not as good. It's not bad, but it's not as good as a Swiss stage for that qualification 100%. like we had last year. It's not as good uh, at producing the best 16 teams in main event. Everybody listen, liked it. You, 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 there's this general sentiment that, like, there's no parity when you... Yes, there is. There was all kinds of teams popping in and out of events oh, yeah. last season, right? Absolutely. There, so it's not like it's a walled off uh, and there's this crazy barrier to entry. You can still get up in there. Um it and just, pretty quickly it, it's too. just something that I think brings a little bit more consistency from a player perspective, a viewer perspective, an org perspective, and even a quality perspective. You know, these main events, you talk about it's a wacky event. Well, that's because we've got four brand new teams, and, and no hate to them. I'm so excited for those players that made it. We've got four brand new teams that have never made a main event in this last one. Um, while we have the team that won all three regionals, unfortunately yeah, missing. not even there and and so also this is really interesting and kind of funny as well that michael a kc hater self-proclaimed is advocating for them getting that spot whereas the kc fans themselves are actually all just angry and disappointed with sure. the team and they're saying no, they well, should be disappointed i was dancing and, i was dancing in my room when i found out that they didn't make it but, but that doesn't is, mean they shouldn't what, be in the okay, okay. But no, this but it's, why, it's this. this it's also with, though. It's not about KC, right? And I yeah, think that's what you're going to yeah. get to. It's about the structure, the form. Well, yes, but I'm also trying to get at that. It's not the narrative of the the fans and the teams that have, uh, you know, experienced the consequences of this format and how punishing it can be are not the ones who who sure. are calling for this right, the most right. the, the kc fans are actually really disappointed with that yeah. they, they don't even want kc like there's still a technical chance that kc make it to london but they don't even want to watch that anymore yeah they like, don't I want, want to see it because yeah and, and the kc fans are like no watching and, screw that. and to be fair like they've had their as, chance and they screwed it up that's right. To be fair, as the team that 
did fall short, that's really what you have to do, right? You have to accept this responsibility, take accountability for your performance. Um, but that that doesn't mean that this is the ideal perfect solution. No. I think we can, for the most part, and and you know, here's the thing. We talked about this before the season began. Yeah. We yeah. knew it was happening. Yeah, something has to change. Yeah. The, like, this, we, can't, we, we actually can't do this again next season. Like, I don't know. I, I, like, if, don't, if they do, you well, guys are going to have to find there another are, third. There are some other solutions as well. Even if they are just very hard stuck against auto qual, I think you could you could have these qualifiers lead into Sunday and then have two 16-team Swiss yeah, brackets totally. that happen at the same time. And the top eight from both of those go main event. And that's going to yield a more consistent product. The problem yeah. here is that we're, we're, we're getting these top 16 events that unfortunately may not be the top 16 very frequently. Yeah. You know, you, you you're having some high level teams bad that are, are, are not there. It's two bad series. It's yeah. six bad games can decide whether you make a, uh, a qualifier or not. And that is a nightmare for an organization who's investing six figures into this esport. Right. Six bad yeah. games. They and Carmen Corp did not miss a championship Sunday for two years. They had six bad games. Then and, and they're out. It's insane. And to to just further build upon that point, they lost to Su, who plays top teams. 14. Okay. They lost to Su, who plays top 14. So just to get into top 16, you have to beat a team that's top 14. And then they lost to top yeah. Cougars, who was top eight. Yeah. That so is dope. not... That's not really the ideal structure. You don't know. You don't need to be beating a top eight team to get to 16. You yeah, know, that seems kind of out of order. Yeah. Anyways, we're, we're, thank, we're you for, thank you for bringing up that we were talking about this before the season even starts, because this is not a reactionary take. This is just something that's wrong with the formats. And I can say that it's wrong with the format. Yeah, it, it doesn't help that multiple things stacked up here. We also have just two splits. If we had this format right. last season with three splits, yeah. that would have made qualifying for Worlds more fair. And sure. now it's really just super it's unlucky volatile. and boom, you're out. Yeah, totally. Yeah. All right. Right. I know we're going to get some comments. Y'all drop them. Let us know why you think just win. Um, well, we got one final team to talk about with North America, Luminosity. Are they officially out of Worlds, or do we think they can have a huge performance in this final qualifier, maybe sneak their way into, um, not the major, but enough points that they don't get uh, jumped? What do you think, Yeah, Michael? so just to overview it, basically, if OG make the major, it's over. Um, yeah. I'm going to be honest, I agree with Jens. After you get past SSG... Um, in terms of the North American power rankings, you're really not looking at anybody who's a serious threat right. to make top eight at the major, um, which is bodes really well for LG because they do high, uh, they do have a bit of a lead over a lot of the other contending teams. Right. Uh, M80, I mean, actually, M80 could make top eight, you know, knowing them, but um, <laughs> they, they, I guarantee they would. Actually, yeah. and then <laughs> we'll talk about that later, actually, on speed taking. But um, you know, I, I think basically, if if you're an LG fan. You need to be cheering harder against OG than you need to be cheering for LG this weekend because if they make it, it's almost guaranteed. They're currently ahead of LG in the standings. Yep. So LG would essentially points for OG, forty-eight for LG. Yeah. So L LG would have to essentially outperform them to a incredible degree, and OG not make the major, or if OG make the major in this event to even have a chance. Yeah. Um, I they did not look good in open qualifiers, but like we said, open qualifiers is one day you get a whole week to reset. Another boot camping down at the Moist facility right now. Um, I think this is really interesting and something we didn't really see uh, with a three split format and such a larger worlds. But it is kind of cool to see, and we'll talk about complexity later. Teams having to really sweat out these last ones, even if they're out of major contention, because their world spot is on the line, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Like even if they, you know, if LG come top top four and they miss the major and and, and Cloud Nine go, that this is a successful regional because they're going to go to the world championship. Right. Um, personally, okay. I don't see it happening. I think LG. I didn't once again. I didn't get to talk about this in our last uh, our last show, but. Uh, I think LG was a team that was always a little bit pro, like primed to fall off later in the season. Not fall off, I should say, decline a bit. Because they were a team I felt was more refined early on. And as teams learned who they were and learned, like learned who they were as a team and learned who Luminosity were as a team, 
it, they were naturally just going to perform worse because their advantage was that they understood how they wanted to play better than other teams did early on in the season. I didn't see it happening like this. I thought they'd still be in contention for the major going into open qualifier six. I thought they'd make the major this season. I thought there was going to be them and SSG as the two major teams. Um, but it's come with a decline from, I think, some of their uh, individual performances. I always say this. If the quote-unquote glue guy is ever being shouted out as like, he's playing the best on the team, your team's cooked. It's over. Every time that happens, like, and they, you, you'll see it in the comment sections. Maybe it's because he has a big face, but this is, you'll see a lot of Reddles is carrying. Reddles' job is not to carry. So if he's carrying, something's going wrong. Like, he is not, he's literally <laughs> designed not to be a carry the way that they play. So if, if, if he's, if he's having to do a lot of the offensive soldering, um, there's something wrong and I hope they can figure it out, but they just, they look like they've been figured out by a lot of the region right now. Yeah. Yeah. And, and also just potential is such a hard thing to drag from the abstract world into something you can actually, you know, tangible measure it with, yeah. but <clears throat> I feel like luminosity gaming out of all these teams because we've been mentioning it how close all of these teams are below g2 gen g space station that they don't have the greatest potential in terms of sure improving from here on out right and that's kind of what you need to do you need to step it up to Big to time. secure those points so yeah i don't really see that see it like that well, let's jump to South America. Uh, speaking of step up, Complexity has a big job ahead of them. Um, I mean, they, they are currently barely ahead of Ninjas, seven points for World Championship. And Ninjas have a, uh, well, I mean, a pretty comfortable, a pretty comfortable position here for the Major. I think if they, um, if they just outperform Complexity, they will be and the secret, secret, team, team be. secret, and secret. Okay. Yeah. I mean, crew two is doing well, but yes, yeah, those two for sure. I mean, so for the major currently, they're they're equal that with uh, team secret in second place with thirty two points, right? Which right. is only eight points behind Furia, by the way. Um, mm -hmm. so and only four points even. ahead of crew. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who have only so lost uh, to Furia this split, by the way? They have not lost to a team that yeah. isn't Furia so far. Who crew? Yeah, yeah, crew have only lost to Fury. Right. They went 3-0 yeah, yeah. Swiss and lost to Fury in the semifinals of the la of the second open qualifier, and then I believe they went 3-1 losing to Fury and then lost to Fury in the Swiss and then lost them again in the semifinals. Well, we've got a yeah. I mean, we've got another situation here just like we were outlining where this second split results for complexity, you know, it, it may not be enough. It may not be enough to get them to the World Championship. So even though they had a good start to the season, um, they made that mid-season change with Diaz, and unfortunately, it did not pan out. Ninjas and um, Team Secret and crew are all in a better spot for Major, and um, Ninjas is definitely the closest, 62 points total to 69 points for Complexity, but Team Secret still has 50. If they go Major, they could definitely jump them. I think a 9-12 um, would, would, would get them there if they stay with Yeah, so it's, it's, a, it's a hot race over there in Sam as well. Yeah, um, I, I still think Complexity should be looking at this like, hey, we might not make the major, but let's go try to get a top two. Like, I think I think they need to be looking at this like it's like a, a major qual because the Sam 2 is just not going to be as good as like they might similar to like the NA 3 4. They're probably not a top eight team in a land. So you can almost right. map how much points you need to be ahead going into the the major and, and for complexity, I think it's important because I think this team is one that needs time. And if you can get to a, a, re, a reasonable sort of, if you can get to a reasonable gap, then you have three to four months to lap, right? Just scrim, scrim, scrims, what's going yeah. on replays, right? You have a split's worth of, uh, a split's worth of, of tape, right? So, Yep. To me, it's like this is big because they could rebound, and, and and I still I still think Diaz is so good, but yeah, yeah, they they need to attack this like they're they're going to the major because if if they if their season ends, it's going to be a failure. Yeah, yeah, and and it's unfortunately pretty likely uh, if complexity so don't really get points up on on ninjas, then they're just gonna overtake them so much. 
it's so crazy that the entire season could have been decided in those final 14 seconds of game six. Mm -hmm. Like it, <laughs> yeah, and they're up insane. two. They're up two. 14 seconds left. Cooked them. Cooked. That was a. That was a. I, yeah. I, I, I mean, that is that like, will haunt those players for eternity. Although Nine I will minutes. say the the kickoff goal they got that kickoff strat, bro, it's wicked. Aura. Oh yeah, they deserved the hell out of that. Yeah, that was so. They're cool. really, you know. I think the the first kickoff strat was obviously exciting. Mm -hmm. Full sin. I mean, what else can you do? Mm -hmm. I don't know why complexity wasn't better prepared for it. But the second one didn't really go 100% according to plan. And then you There's had Swift kind of like, that. you know, loop around the ball and flick it up over to a yeah. teammate that was waiting. And, I'm, you know, incredible improv, you know, for them to just stay composed in those final moments, knowing that, you know, they're eliminated if they don't score. Mm. Was, yeah, it might be improvised, but they were so ready for it. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I we can kind of slide over to the other thing, um, the other topic for Sam. Uh, I really want to see NIP at the major. I want to see them last. But remember, I had that whole elaborate thing about how yep. they were going to sneak in and win. That's right. Um, I was actually just two regionals. I was two regionals late. I was two regionals early. Sorry, my exact plot actually came true in the uh, Open Qualifier Five. Um, but I, I, I really want to see this team. I really want to see Swift at the major. I feel like we saw Sphinx and Nupo at the major. And it was very exciting, especially on Sphinx's end. I think this NIP team could be so special. And I would, I just, I mean, when you have like a young talent, like a real like kind of region altering young talent come up, you got to let him get out there and show his stuff against the best in the world. Like you just got to. So, I mean, like listen, yeah, I said region altering <laughs> for, in kidding, a good I'm way. Kidding. My fault. I should have said a positive region altering because... <laughs> yeah, he, he definitely altered the reason, the region. But yeah, I'd like to see I'd like to see Swift get there, man. I want to see. I mean, yeah. Astromic always finds his way to a couple majors every year. Uh, mm -hmm. Mata really impressed um, at his one or two appearances at majors last year. So yeah, come on, bring me Swift, bring me Swift to the major. I'm ready. Would be exciting. Um, Mina, on the other hand, is not so much up in the air. Uh, Falcons have won every event. Twisted Minds have been second every event, and it looks like it's pretty well locked up. It Has really this does. ever happened before? I wondered if you guys knew. Has there ever been a player who's lost every single final? I know we have had like people get perfect. Like Falcons had a perfect season, I think, twenty one, twenty two. Uh, do you guys know if because Ahmad is now on? He might lose all six finals because he was on rule one the first split. That, oh yeah, I didn't even think no, about that one. I don't know. Yeah, so he he's going in. He's now had five shots to get to win a regional in the final. He's lost all five. Do you guys think that this that maybe complacent seal gets to the Falcons and uh, you know they've been challenged a couple times by? Are we going to see Ahmed get one for the road? Nope. It just feels like Team Falcons fly, baby. Drop. Might drop a game here or there, but if they if they're locked in, they're not losing a grand finals. They're not losing four games in a series. Their their major performance inspired so much confidence for me in that yeah. team. I, I really y'all yeah, yeah, yeah. remember I was so excited about them beforehand. And, and at that point it's like kind of speculative, right? You, yes. You see those two for rule one play well. You know TRK is the the real deal, but how will they do together? And I, I just hoped that they would be what I thought they could be. And even though they got knocked out top eight, it was such an impressive performance throughout the Swiss and against that Carmi Corp team where they ended up falling in game seven. I feel that that is the best team out of Mina um, ever, uh, yes. you know, relative to that time. Yeah. And I, I just think, well, Twisted Minds have been great. And I think, to be honest with you, even fighting against Falcons and, and you know, like that game seven, um, loss. I think it was the first event this split that inspires confidence me as in me as well. I think the Swiss and Minds team. I think I was underrating them, overlooking them, and I think they may perform better than Rule One did if they are to make the major. But do I think they're going to take down Falcons at all? No. Nope. Yeah, I, I've got so in my per, like shift sixteen that I submitted, I have Falcons at number two in the world. Um, yeah. I'm starting to convince myself day after day that I think they're probably going to win in London. I think they're going to get their revenge after uh, losing in the grand final. Um, yeah. But 
I'm working. I'm workshopping something right now. Okay, I'm okay. workshopping a take. If we look All at right. the previous two world champions, right? Yep. They have to experience a humiliation ritual, which is something that conspiracy theorists think that when celebrities do dumb stuff, they do it sure. because it's like a ritual to get more famous, right? Right. Um, so when when Vitality won the world championship, they missed a regional. Um, when BDS yeah. won the world championship, they went 06 at the spring major. Sure. Carmen Corp just missed a, a regional, right? So they got to yeah. be put in contention for the world championship right away off that. Uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> Sneaky Falcons miss Swiss. Sorry, miss top eight in a shock 2-3 exit to complete their humiliation ritual so they can be... I mean, we already saw Gen G do their humiliation ritual for their world's win by losing to OG. But oh will we be God. seeing Falcons My humiliate down themselves? down the rabbit hole. And we have to pretend to take this guy seriously most <laughs> of the time. <laughs> Listen, wow. I, I know that correlation was, does not hate. equal causation, but I'm just saying, humiliation Lando, ritual you, Falcons. Lando, can you edit the tinfoil hat on this guy? <laughs> humiliation ritual for the Falcons. I, I can oh, see it coming. Goodness. So just don't be surprised if they suddenly go 2-3 out in Swiss. Okay. Okay. So okay. Vitality last year, last season. Mr. Regional. Just didn't... The very first regional. They they got out right, the way quick. Okay, they got out okay. the way quick. This is how the this is how the conspiracy theorists work. No, because they were like, if you want to sign Zen early, yeah. If you want to sign Zen early, the big the big epic. That's what okay. they call the big the, the the suits at Epic said, if you want to sign Zen All right, early. So you heard it here first. Michael yeah. says Falcons miss the playoff bracket. Yeah. No, I didn't say that. Scorching. I said if they do oh, it, scorching. my theory will be continued to be. Oh, okay, okay. I'm pretty sure I heard you say that they missed. The I said sneaky. Back. I said sneaky mouth. When I say sneaky, I mean I don't think it's gonna happen. But if I, it does happen, I get credit for it. That's what sneaky means. It means I get credit. Okay. Way. So, like we said, Mina looks pretty locked up. Falcons yep. one, Twisted Minds two, SSA in a similar situation. It looks locked up, and it's. It's EU one that we take no pleasure there. in reporting. Yeah. Team Mobula is two for two in regionals. I mean, most likely going to win the third, or at the very least, go top four. So they will almost certainly be the team, a full Spanish roster, mm. representing Sub-Saharan Africa at the London Major. Yeah. I yep. have to say, Team Mobula is the team, if I remember correctly at least, that is actually present in uh, the two region. Two of their players. To... I believe one of their players okay. is still in thing. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. You know, it's something. It is very tiny, but it's something. Yeah, I'd like to congratulate uh, Europe. They finally got more uh, got land spots than NA. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm higher. so excited. Okay. I was squealing this at the beginning of the season when they announced this. Yeah. I was squealing that Psyonix took the five seed yeah. from now Europe it's just and the gave EU it to the 30 seed. seed. Yeah. They literally yeah. took it from five and gave it to, th- to 50. What so, are we doing, Psyonix? What another doing? theory that I'm workshopping. E- oh, they did God. this on purpose so that NA's... <laughs> Here we go. They did this on purpose so that NA's record against EU on land would go up. You know? Because <laughs> we keep getting shellacked. It's like, well, listen, OG got a dub over EU. <laughs> SSG got a dub over EU. You know? Jesus. Okay. Okay. I know what to I do. Mean, all right. <laughs> I'm, I need to interview someone from Psyonix. At London, and I need to ask this ask question. Ask them the question. Ask them, is this all an NA? I mean, Sionix yeah. is an NA company, you know? It is. San so Diego. Ask them. Ask California. Them exactly. It's Cali- adding I up. need to do that. It's yeah. adding up. Yeah. Yeah. Last what? time I saw Lumen, who is basically the boss of RL Esports, I was uh, at the airport in Copenhagen uh, on my way back, basically, and it was 9 or 9.30 in the morning, and uh, they were giving away free vodka samples. And that's where he met me <laughs> <laughs> to say, hey, I've saved travels. Oh, my God. See, that's that was that funny. N- not embarrassing at all. That's funny. <laughs> that's what you want to know, for sure. So but on the SSA note, we have the invaders most likely going to London. But it does seem like Limitless is going to maintain their lead as long as they can perform decently well, maybe a top eight or better in uh, in this final regional, um, they should hold their spot for Worlds unless Team Mobula goes top eight or top four or something at the major, which... They need to happening. go, I think, so, top four, which would be hilarious, but not happening. 
It would be something. It would be something. Yeah. Um, Even a uh, young about money humili- can't, can't stop this. Maybe, maybe that's their hu- humiliation. Falcons lose to Team Mobula at the major. If a team loses to them, you Mark didn't hear down, from me. Huh? Okay. Just make sure you're <laughs> that's watching the world them champion right there. in Texas. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just make sure you're watching them in Texas. Oh, goodness. Okay. All right. Next segment Double Down Open Qualifier 6 Edition. We are each going to. Uh, make a prediction regarding the final major spots that are up for contention, and we'll revisit this seg- uh, this segment after Open Qualifier 6 are finished. Anyone want to go first? I'll go first. Okay. Do it. So just to, just to make sure, these are... We're going to give takes about this weekend's mm-hmm. events. Yeah, so, so that'll be the finals, NA, but it'll be... Yeah. Let's, let's I, the way I wrote it was related to the final major spots. So like a team that will or will not make a major, right. a right. team that will whatever. Yep. It pains me to say this. It, it really, okay. it really does. It pains me to say this. Okay. Oh no. I know I shouldn't be saying it. Oh no. My first double down that we did, or our first silence that silence the doubters we did. Oh no. I, I said it, and uh, it let me down. Yep. Oh. But listen. But you're going. They've back. had six chances, and on the very last one, with their backs to the wall, they're going to do it. M80 <laughs> are making the major. I know I just did a whole thing about OG, but in the time that I was listening, thinking about it, I was like, mm, kind of boring, kind of lame, and you know, who knows what's going to happen in that Swiss? Like yeah, they could, you know, yeah. they could do something weird. So you know what? They say, fool me once. Shame yep. on you. Fool me twice. Shame on me. They're, they don't have a saying for fool me six times. So they don't. Let's figure it out right now. <laughs> and it, Michael and said he's to the major. Come Michael on. said he is quintupling down. Yes, I am se- sextupling, I believe, <laughs> uh, down on M80. There's just like, come on, guys. Let's just figure it out. There's only one yeah, chance. I mean, I you're get staring, it, though, because you feel like, how it. does it continue to happen? You're staring at an eight-month offseason. You're just going to go out like this? Like, this is sad. Mm. Mm. Hint? I am looking to the team that dropped the king. Mm. But they will be on the throne themselves. Crew Esports Ooh, is like that, only dude. four points behind Ninjas in Pajamas and Team mm-hmm. Secrets. Of course, it's going to be tough, but they can snatch that major spot away from them. Ooh. That is my take. I like that, that is a team with AJG, Bems, and Wisty, Good which team. aren't the greatest individual players out of the region. They're not, but they're a good team. Yeah, And they've been losing too much to Furia, but they've not been losing that much in general. They have to get pretty far to make this happen, but Crew could do it. Crew could do it. It's a hot take, but they could do it. I like it. All right. I already talked about it earlier, and I'm just going to go ahead and double down on it. it Snowmen. They go major. They get their top four. We see OG and Cloud9 bounced at top eight. So I'm not going to stop at the major. Snowmen, they go top eight at the major, and they go into Worlds. The young guns, the the babies are out of the stroller, and they are taking off running. The babies have hit the ground running. They're, They're... Eyes are on the prize. I think that team... Here's what I do think in the future, and that team may not be those three players, but I do think two or, or or maybe all three of them will find themselves on major regular teams um, where where they're no longer fighting to get in. They are there, maybe even contending for top fours, maybe a win. I think that team has so much talent. It's just very green. They're very new. So we're talking about Scribbles, Reveal, and Frosty. Who do you think has the best chance of really making it individually? Scribbles. On this team or not? I like Scribbles. I like Scribbles. He's so young. It's not even about the ability, because I actually think all of them are are pretty similar. I think Frosty probably has an edge um, in mechanics maybe at the moment. But Scribbles, I've had a bit of interaction with him, and he is extremely mature for... And I'm not even actually not 14, 14 year old. He's he's mature. Period. He mm-hmm. just understands the situations that he's in. Um, I'll give an anecdote here. So he he popped into my stream a few times a long time ago. Not so much anymore. Uh, but this was kind of when age was still 15, and he was still dabbling in ones and whatever else. And 
somebody in the stream was making jokes like, hey, you know, Seiko, Zen, if you get banned, yeah. world champion, right? And he is just very quickly like, no, I'm taking this serious. Like, I'm not taking any chances. I know what opportunity I have in front of me. I'm going to make sure that I'm, I'm working by the books. I'm doing what I need yeah, to do. Wow. You, you, if you follow him on Twitter, you know, it's inevitable that young bubble scene just has silly beef and, and trash talk and whatever. And he, y'all know what I'm saying when I'm saying he sons people? Mm -hmm. he, he is 14 and, and calling these immature people out for, for you know, acting so That's silly. That's pretty funny. And so I just, I really like where his head's at from what I see, from what I know, which obviously I don't know him personally, but from what I've seen from him, I, I feel like he has got his head on straight. He's young, so much time ahead of him. I think Scribbles, yeah. um, but all yeah. three of them, all three of them. Yeah. I, I like I'd, like to see, I'd like to see him join up. Uh, I'd like to see him go. If this team doesn't work out, i like to see Scribbles join SSG. I look at what El Sad Junior did for LJ, developing sure. into him, because they, they've been in STAP for years. Right. Um, and in a shift interview with Sad Junior, he said, you know, I sat down with the kid when he was 14 and said, listen, you listen to me, I'll make you one of the best players in the world. He didn't lie. So I'd like to see him lie. join up with a, with, a, with a coach that really knows what he's doing. If, you know, like you said, if, if he has that level of maturity and I think he can develop right. into an elite piece yeah. very fast. Yeah, if if your if your take your hot take is something to go by, that would make him 14 years old at the World Championship because his birthday is in November. Mm. Wow, that would be well, so well, well. crazy. That would, it would be insane. If they, if they went baby, on a huge right? surge here at the final two events of the season to to snag that fourth world spot, that would be 2009. Such a fun uh, story. Oh no. Anyway. Yeah. And and this is y'all. I mean, we talked about this too. Where at the beginning of season we said, you know, NA has unfortunately been kind of the, the butt of the joke for what two two years now. And we said, hey, just hold on. Yeah, There's some talent they're developing. They're coming. So if you're an NA fan, you need to be cheering for these young guns mm -hmm. to uh, just bring their A game. All right, there is our hot takes. Y'all let us know some of yours down in the comments below regarding the major spots for these upcoming uh, upcoming regionals. All right, final segment: speed taking. Here we go. Let's talk about somebody else's takes. That's right. These are takes from the shift cord. If you want to join, we've got the uh, link down here in the description. Jump in there. Give us your takes as well. This is from Fruit. G2 have a better case for being number one team in the world than Team Falcons. Yens. Mind you, just... mind you, mind you, G2 has not finished below second place in any RLCS event this season, including major. Falcons, right? Perfect at home. Top eight at international major. Chance to go six for six. Impressive yeah. resumes on both sides. Man, what a, what Absolutely. a what a what a group of teams we have this year, huh? Like we, you know, for all the format stuff. Sorry, just quickly, we might never see a crop of consolidated talent the way that we have are seeing it right now. Sure. And, you know, I hope people really appreciate what we have. Yeah, yeah, there were some doubts about forming super teams in NA with G2 and Gen G. Yeah. But it's it's worked out pretty well and it's worked out amazingly for Gen for uh, Gen G. No, for G2. Freudian slip. And, hey. <laughs> no, G All right, G2 so here's what we got. is a team that's not just gone ahead and be the best team in North America but also um, managed to take that to a major, yeah. right? And that's what you want to see. Falcons were amazing there too, and we had quite high expectations, I would say. Yeah, yeah. And they still matched or even overcame those expectations. And still, G2 are just the team to look at if you're looking to see a winner from another region than EU. That's just how I see it. Yeah. But... I heard Michael okay. wasn't that as, as yeah. sure about that. So but, you would uh, say that you would say that G two has a better better yes. claim to first. Yes. Okay. Because uh, also because NA, despite the scrambling teams below the top three, is a stronger region in general. Yeah. It is Michael, just that much harder to get to the top. Michael, you do you do uh, sports ball? I dabble. Dabble. Let me throw this one to you then. Um, I, I imagine Jens is probably not caught up with the uh, I was NBA hoping that Jens finals. would take it. But yeah. I am not. Uh, so this is from Knight. The Minnesota Timberwolves win the NBA championship. 
No, no, they're a great no, team, no, no. and uh, they've beaten you know the 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 most evil Brain entity. Change. Yeah, the most evil entity in professional sports, maybe, in Nikola Jokic, who has ruined the game I love. Um, but I, I think Boston's top seven is just too good. Ooh, um, okay, Boston, Minnesota. For those who do not, um, for the for those who do not follow basketball, Boston is sort of the G two of of the NBA. They play in a weaker conference, but they are an absolute super team. Um, and then I would say that Minnesota's comp is like BDS. So I think most people would say right now G two maybe <laughs> squeaks it out over BDS in a land final. Uh, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say that 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 metaphor works. Um, okay. For wasn't there a big upset in a Wolves game recently? No, they just beat the the Nuggets, the defending champions. Yeah. yeah. So they yeah they did. they came back from down twenty. It was it was electric. Hootie. Yeah yeah that, that's it. Yeah. Let's Hootie. hear it. Let me let me let me let me ask you this. This takes from Jens. Hey, hello. We're gonna have to settle this with a third neutral third party. Okay, because I, I call him this all the time, and, and Jens decided that he wanted to take it public, his disdain for it. I wanted to delete that, that message. I wanted to abuse my mod powers in the Discord. That was unacceptable. <laughs> I use it all the time. Mode, the name right. Mode, is an unacceptable abbreviation of Beast Mode. Yes or no? It is unacceptable. Oh, you guys stink, man. Holy <laughs> crap. No, no, we need to get we need to get out. Sorry? You're gonna call me who? No, but it's just <laughs> mode. Like, that's just name. mode. That's no, just mode. No, that's not He's in you that mean, mode. You could go. You could go. You could go with Bimo. Yeah, Bimo. Two Perfectly syllables. Fine. Two syllables. Bad. One syllable. No. Good. Dan. No. Dan. It's the first half. Mode. Dan mode. Yeah, we call him no. Dan mode. That's just mode. That's just mode. Well, if you're fusing two names, that's different. Dan mode is fine. I call him big mode. You can't say bestial. L- little mode. I'm like, he's Hello in that mode. mode. Are we Crazy. workshopping? Yeah, Music baby I mode. Baby mode. I would even say that hey, mode is worse mode than Hendrix. Beast. Beast sucks too. No, yeah, Beast, Beast is, is awful. Good. Beast is god awful. Uh, yeah, it sounds awful. Mode, is, mode no is tough. Mode no, is so chill. Mode is no. Tough. Mode is Next so tough. Next time I'm timing you out if you I'm say out. that in Discord. Let us know what y'all think. Y'all like mode in the comments? Mode is I'm not, so I'm good. I'm not rocking with it. I'm going to keep saying mode. You can't silence me. All right. I'm just going to... Yeah. I'm just going to throw you a take so you stop yapping. <laughs> From cold, all cold. three players on BDS are top 10 players in the world. It's not three players. Any of the players on BDS aren't better than mode, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> I don't oh know what I'm talking God. about. But yeah, Two. no. Hell no. Um, maybe Whoa. one. Whoa. I'm looking at... I mean, What's it's one? weird like where you rank players now because of what happened to KC, but like, there's some no-doubt players to me. In the in the top ten, mm-hmm. which are uh, Atau, Zen, uh, Mode, uh, Kaliers. <laughs> um, I think those are like the clear top four in the world for me. I would still put FK in there. Uh, I think you got to look at Vitsira. I think you got to look at uh, Itachi for the sustained success that he's had over the last couple of years. Right. So we're already at seven. So this means that you'd have to think there are no players better in the entire world. I haven't even said Seiko yet. I haven't said. Like, I haven't said uh, any, like, Daniel. I haven't said Yan. I haven't Falcons. said a lot of players, right? I said Kaliers. So I haven't players, said TRK yeah. either. You'd have to believe that every other player in the world is worse than Exotic, Drawly, and Monkey Moon. I don't think anybody believes that. Um, so, no. This is just, uh, you know, I know Colt from the, from the thing. Gen, noted Gen G hater. Um, but also a noted, uh, you know, BDS Based. super fan. So, you know, Based like. He's a Sorry? He's a stay no, Based. no, not BDS, B Disney S. That's what I used to call them back in the day. Um, but yeah, they're not, they're not there. I think they might have one player. Like at any given time, they probably have one player in the top ten, or maybe even two. But there are too many like special, special individual players. And ever since Monkey Moon sort of fell off a bit, uh, not fell off, declined, hit the twilight of his yeah, career. Yeah, he had a couple. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think they haven't had like a. a What's the word? Uh, solidified top, like elite sure. superstar. All right, Jens, you gave me a take. Yeah. Now I'm going to give you a take, and then we'll finish it off with Hoodie. Um, SSG is closer to the rest of NA in level and their ability than Gen G and G2. So, like, if we did like a ranking, yeah, they would be like closer to here than here. Jens got him above Gen G, so. 
Yeah, I, I want to see. I think I think a space station are very close to G two and Gen G in a moment. I think they are a, a good step ahead above the other teams that are a chaotic bunch. They're scrambling for those points, and it's working somehow. But I don't know what to think of that. But space station are just better than them, and and they're not that much worse than G two and Gen G. Well, they play. They they took G two to seven, and and frankly, probably could have won that series if they had just cleaned mm-hmm. up a little bit in yeah, six and seven. Yeah, quickly. Do yeah. you think that SSG with the right bracket could get a top four on LAN? On LAN, um, because I I think if it, the the hmm. most people say the other two teams can't. So if they're right there, the then they should be able to get a top four on LAN. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, it's close. I'm, I'm not sure about it. If it was just NA and EU attending, but you have some other teams as well, right? You have mm-hmm. the Team Falcons. You have maybe a Furia or something, or Ninjas, who knows? Mm-hmm. Uh, that makes it tough. Uh, but sure, there's a... Yeah, yeah. Okay, sure. I'll give okay, it to him. Cool. I just wanted to know. And then finally for Hootie, I got you in the last one. Yep. And this is something we've talked about kind of procedurally throughout the show, so I thought it'd be nice to end it with this. M80, if they make the major, get top eight. They stay, they 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 dominate the Swiss, and then they just they go out, you know, in perfect. How fashion. could they not? How could they not? I don't understand how they would miss it. They've never <laughs> done anything else. They make it through the Swiss, and hit the hit the quarterfinals, and they hit the road. So I don't know how they could do anything else. In That's theory, exactly what right? Do. If they could beat G2 Gen G back to back in Swiss, they could probably beat like Vitality Gentle Mates back to back in Swiss. They, right? This is why it's so confusing. They have the talent. Yeah, I just don't crazy. understand. Yeah, it's, crazy. it's just not clicking. When they play Gen G, they look like like they look like BDS. Bro, it's different. insane. <laughs> they look insane. <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, yeah, I see them in my nightmares. <laughs> That's so funny. yeah. The merchants are selling those uh, the Swiss stocks. Huh? Yeah, dude, it's the crazy. Swiss stocks. <laughs> yeah that that series. Um, yeah, that series with Gen G was unbelievable. Um, and it, it's, yeah, it's a 3 0. It's a sweep. I mean, if they could translate it to bracket, man. And they is so silly. Good. So silly. That's like, it's like, you know, we've been talking about, hey, after that SSG, like, there's just a bunch of teams. It's like, no, they're so clearly a fourth team, and they refuse to acknowledge that they are the <laughs> clear fourth team. <laughs> like, it's like, there's your four teams that should have been at both majors, making yeah. us look competitive. Make it, yeah. And one of them just got bracketed, but now they've proven, hey, it was just a bracket thing. The other one's like, La, 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 la. nope we're not that good <laughs> shut up like dude just win the that's, thing, why I, that's why i want to count teams like lg out of the conversation there but mm-hmm. you can't because a team like m80 isn't showing yeah. up it's yep. insane mm. we'll see what happens this weekend y'all be sure to tune in it's going to be on the rlcs channel um some of the other regions obviously will have their their broadcast as well just browse around the rocket league section i'm sure you'll find it if y'all like these speed takes drop some uh Drop some in the Discord. The link will be below for ShiftCord. Y'all jump in there. We appreciate you watching. That's it for ShiftCast episode 17. We'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.